Hello and welcome to yet another 3v1 with my former colleagues Panolion, Revanche, Purosadova and Sadlem. Finally, we have all made it to the Definitive Edition. One of the um, three didn't have the Definitive Edition or the hardware to run it until very recently, so finally we got around to playing the third installment of this um, epic matchup, 3v1, of the three guys against me. We had two matches on HD, as I said uh, previously. You can obviously check those out as well. I will leave the link uh, in the video description. And now we have the, well, the first match in, in the modern age, in the modern Age of Empires Definitive Edition. So we were all pretty hyped getting into this. And finally, here it is. The Definitive Edition offers the opportunity to um, basically lock the vision of, of the, or hide the Sith picks from the other players, um, which allowed us to just pick civilizations without the other players knowing which ones we went for, uh, which obviously only really mattered um, for them not knowing what I picked and me not knowing what they picked, they were in voice chat um, discussing this stuff. I recorded myself playing, but I did not record myself uh, talking about this because um, I didn't feel like it. So I just recorded myself playing and now I'm going to talk over myself uh, playing, basically. Um, I think this is more exciting to watch uh, compared to just the replay, which I did last time. So in the first match we played on HD, I recorded myself playing and talking at the same time, um, basically live commentary. Second time around, I only use, use the replay because I, I simply forgot to record the game, I think, or something like that. And this time around, uh, we're going to use the uh, the footage of the gameplay from my point of view, plus my commentary in hindsight. Um, this also allows me to play a little, or in theory it should have allowed me to play a little smoother, but um, in practice we will see this, this isn't really... Um, achieve the, the the goal of, of playing a little smoother because I can already spoil this um, my opening wasn't um, as smooth as I would have hoped but I will come to that later so we were allowed to pick civs or we, we didn't really set any rules regarding the civilizations last time I think the first match I went random they picked second match they picked for me and they picked for them as well um, so in the first match I played two in the second match I played Turks this time around I just, I, well, there was no um, opposition to me picking my civilization, so I just went ahead and picked my favorite civilization, which is the Mayans. And the Mayans have one of the best units for this kind of situation, I believe. The Plumed Archer, it's their unique unit. It's a very fast and very cheap um, Archer, a ranged unit, and it's also fairly durable, so it has a lot of advantages. And it can't be masked easily, but the disadvantage is you have to be in Castle Age and you have to have a castle. And I looked at my base here and thought, my gold is in the back, one of my stones is in the back, my berries are in the back, and I have fairly thick wood lines, so I decided to just rush to the castle straight away and just don't do anything in between. Um, and now we come to my first mistake, I kind of didn't click on the board apparently, and then I missed... Um, Oh, now I actually see, I, I did hit a shot on him while he was running back and then I misclicked again. So basically, I was trying to be fancy here and stall the boar until the first sheep or goat ran out. Um, and as a result, I had a bunch of misclicks and the boar came in very late in a very awkward position and I slotted another goat in the meantime. So this was obviously not planned and it didn't go very well. But it's, I don't think this, this was... Um, a deciding factor in my my overall performance, but it's just um, a sign of what to come, uh, of what's to come. That's the expression, I believe. Anyway, so I, I looked at the space. You, see, you can see I already used my houses in a little bit of a palisade wall to block off the left side of my base, and um, also looked at my ostriches over there, the equivalent of deer on the African style maps. And we played on standard Arabia, by the way, but in the definitive edition, this can include any kind of um, regional variation and I try to push them in they give 140 additional food which can be gathered extremely fast because gatherers from uh, or hunters gather food faster than other food sources and the Mayans have the amazing economy bonus that all their resources last a little bit longer so they can basically extract more food from one ostrich than any other Sith would it's pretty handy um, yeah, so I, I basically decided very early on that I wanted to just um, go for a straight fast castle, so basically skip the fuel age and um, 
just go for the plumed archers right away, which had also the oh, multiple advantages actually. So I could place a defensive castle, which would prevent them from doing substantial damage early on, because the castle is a very, very good defensive building, obviously. And I would get my unique unit, which is um, also the unit I mostly wanted to do for the whole game, um, out from the get-go. Um, the disadvantage, obviously, is that for the, the entire duration of the Feudal Age, I would not have any military. And that's why, when going for this kind of approach, you need to wall your base thoroughly and early on. Um, we'll see how that went. Oh, and there was another misclick. I actually thought I had let my um, villagers shoot that ostrich. And now the first scout arrived at my base from the blue player here. I will not attempt to pronounce his name too much. I will maybe call him Mr. Revanche. He still hasn't changed it. I, I think we talked about him having too long of a name, but well, his decision, obviously. Another advantage of the Mayans in this situation is they start with one additional villager, and that means that you have to, uh, if you want to keep that bonus and, and not, not just, you know, lose it, you need to start by researching Loom in the town center, which also is a technology that any Sith does before clicking up, so you, you always want to get that technology when, when going up to Feudal Age. But by going for it first, um, while building houses, um, you obviously have protect or stronger villages that are um, less susceptible to, to rushes or um, scout cheesing from the get-go. And uh, that makes walling so much safer and so much easier. The thing that I didn't do well, that we can already observe, maybe due to um, too many tasks, tasks at the same time. With scouting, I didn't actually look at what they were doing, uh, but frankly I didn't care too much. I um, didn't really consider what their plans were, I just wanted to get my plan through and play from there. That then went for the Franks here, he's in the pocket position. Um, in the definitive edition you can basically determine... Oh, my, my phone is still on loud mode, I should maybe silence that. And that's actually one of the guys <laughs> commenting on the, on the match. Um, where was I? Anyways, so they had the Franks in the pocket position and in the definitive edition you can, by choosing the colors, define which player will be in the pocket position, i.e. the position furthest away from the enemy. And they chose Sandlam with the Franks, a typical pocket position Sith because they can um, make uh, very strong cavalry. And cavalry is obviously a little faster than other units and you can get to the enemy faster using it. I like that they coordinated their scouts to prevent myself from walling, but only Sadlam paid attention to his scout so I could shoot the other one with my town center. And the other one was uh, a week from earlier. Overall, the whole affair didn't go super smoothly. I just did this to finally block this off. But it, it went reasonably well considering that I had all three scouts in my base. But we also have to consider that I didn't move my, my own scout for a very long time and it, it was inactive almost for the entire duration of, of the uh, of my click up, I suppose, of my on my way to Feudal Age. I didn't really use it. Um, but I wanted to play reactor from, from the beginning and, and see where this would get me and, and then see what happens, basically. Um, now, in hindsight, I could have just tried to play more economically minded or focused first and then go for the castle. Because my base is so defensive, I could have used the, the town centers, additional town centers, for defensive purposes and then um, start off with a better economy and, and then kind of transition into aggression, but I wanted to try to do both at the same time, so expand my economy a little bit and have some plumed archers on the field to arrest the enemy, kill a bunch of their villages perhaps, and uh, maybe also repel any attacks they might throw at me. I think this is where I lose my scout, but we'll see. Also, I didn't. I think I should have placed one more farm or I actually pulled one guy away from berries that I shouldn't have. Yeah, it's only three guys on berries. Probably one of the guys building the walls. So I had to kind of try to get, squeeze out that last bit of food to actually click up. And now I'm reasonably late. I think normally with this kind of build, I should have arrived in the castle age around 16 minute 30, something like that in game time. Um, and I think that I did arrive in the castle age around 17 minutes 30, so at least a minute above. 
that's obviously not optimal. It, this just it comes by from from not using the town center at, at certain points. So of course, right before I clicked up, I didn't use it, and uh, probably during the times I tried to um, focus on on the enemy scouts coming in my base or or on the on the boar that I failed to to lure properly. At those times, I probably didn't use my town center completely either. Now Paneolion came in with the militia. I didn't uh, continue talking about the civilizations actually. Revanche also plays a cavalry sieve, but the Magyars are in general a very flexible sieve. They have very good cavalry archers as well. They can go for Arbalest as well. They have a lot of technologies. They have a very, very open tech tree. And Panolion, the same, actually applies to him, more or less. Now, the Chinese have a lot of technologies. They have many, many units to go for. One of the strongest unique units in the game, the Chukunu, which also performs reasonably well against the Plumed Archer, by the way. Uh, but I think for beginners or, or people not as... Um, experience in the game, the Chinese are probably the worst pick because they're very hard to play. They have a very um, unique start because you start with more villagers but less resources and you have to really get your early game down to, to make this work properly. Um, this seems like an overreaction by me actually. I didn't have to rush down the castle. I could have chosen a more, um, I don't know, slow approach here. And I tried to squeeze out the, those last stones to also place a town center. I could have definitely prioritized that, considering that the only attack at the moment is coming from those militia and they're not getting in anytime soon. You can also block them off with the house, of course. But um, better be safe than sorry was um, my line of thought here. And once I have the castle, it's very hard for them to, to make, uh, to do any kind of damage. Of course, castles are very durable and it, in the early castle age, you can basically not get by without losing your units. If, if you run by the castle, that is. And now um, I started producing plumed archers. And by the score, we can see that the other guys were doing very well. Like, much, much better than in the last matches. I already arrived in Castle Age, which gives a huge boost to the score anyways. We can see that on the bottom right. And um, seeing that they're not that far behind means that they are doing well. They have probably a strong economy and have probably scouted the map. Of course they have scouted the map more than I did because I just um, kind of sent my scout in the middle of nowhere and, and lost it. I didn't even I didn't even notice when I lost it to be honest. Um, but soon I, I would start actually moving out here. I think I waited for... F yeah, I think that's the moment I move out, yeah. And the plan was not to necessarily um, pressure them per se, but to just pick off villagers here and there and kind of distract them keep them in their bases so they wouldn't attack me and uh, in the meantime just buy myself time to expand my economy a little more. The fact that I was first in Castle Age also meant that I was able to build an additional town center. I, I could have or maybe should have built a third one sooner but I think I took my sweet time because I wanted to keep producing those blue now just costing some wood as well. Um, but anyways just two town centers is already one more than each of them has so um, that means that I have definitely best economy at the in, at, at this point in time. It was my first raid. I don't think I achieved more than that one villager and I didn't even look at it. Um, overall, yeah, I think it's just the two. Maybe three, maybe three. Um, overall, this is not going to really get him out of the game, but it's going to focus his attention on, on defending, on maybe making some units that can um, kill my opponent archers. Um, he could just go for knights, which I, I think uh, his initial plan was anyways. Um, here we see the first um, proper attack maybe from Pandolian and he actually does a smart move here. He moved up to my wood line where I was gathering wood and shot above it with his archers. And that's exactly what you should do when somebody is playing defensively. You can just position your archers in a position where um, they can basically shoot all of the defenses and then kind of harass the enemy economy. It's, nothing, it's, it's basically what I was doing with my archers as well. So um, my reaction in this case was just to, to move them to the other side of the, of the base and um, Maybe reclaim that woodline later with some plumed archers. I think I, I'm even doing it now. But I accidentally sent them outside. Instead of just before the war. And plumed archers perform quite well against other archers because they have more anti-archer armor than actual archers have. So pierce armor, that's the the armor that you need to... Um, that's used to calculate the, the damage you take from archers and, and any kind of ranged unit. And plumed archers have 
a little more of that than uh, regular archers and they're also faster. They have, they have a lot of upsides and they have been um, made weaker, they have been nerfed in the definitive edition a little bit. They have been stronger in the, um, in the HD edition and also in the original version. But they're st still pretty strong and they're very handy to players. I really like them and they're one of the main reasons why the Mayans are not only my favorite Sith but many many people's favorite Sith. It's just a very smooth civilization and a very very nice unit to play. And they're very cheap and they produce faster. They have, they have basic they have very very few downsides. Um, they cannot really do much against siege units and mass knights also kill them very very fast. Um, Huskals kill them as well but uh, all of these options are costly and harder to control I, I believe so. Um, generally, in this situation where I, I was banking on just being the faster player, obviously, so being able to execute more actions per minute than them, um, is actually perfect for, for this kind of unit. So now we could uh, start to see the score different rise a little more, now that Salem and Remorche had um, been in the castle edge for a little bit. Pandolion he overextended a little bit with the archer, I think. And I also went to his base a little bit. I think I killed more of his villagers than I killed of, of Revanche. So it's only natural that he's a little bit behind you. Also, he's the player who generally plays this game the least. And this was a moment where I was um, laughing a little bit. This is, for those who don't know, a bit of a meme moment in the Age of Empires community. It's a doubt castle. Doubt one of the... Um, well, most famous and uh, most notorious professional Age of Empires players who has been around forever. Also famous for placing very risky castles and, and kind of losing all his villagers, building them in the process when, when he kind of builds them at the wrong time, right when enemy troops approach. But I, I noticed that Sadlin was covering his ass there with some knights, so I, I didn't even pay attention to it and just let the archers shoot at as many villagers as they could. I think I got at least three or four. So, um, it's not a perfect trade, but it was definitely worth it. Running into the TC there was obviously not optimal, and I think Remorche re reacted fast enough, and he had a lot of skirmishers in his base already with some decent upgrades on them, so in this situation he did exactly the right thing. I had no choice but to run away. But my plan, as I, as I said, was not necess necessarily to kick anyone out of the game just yet, but just to keep their growth in, in check annoy them a little bit and prevent them from attacking me and I think so far that worked out pretty well. But in, in the same time I scouted that Remorche went for 3 TCs early on, I mean early for his castle time. He didn't go to castle age directly with a fast castle, he just played feudal age and, pro and he, he noticed the, that I was fully walled. All of them knew that early on, having all their scouts in my base um, and did the right thing to not push in Fuel Edge or try to attack me with Fuel Edge army because that's usually something that puts you a little more behind it. still. That's a bad habit that a lot of players have. Just if you want to research a technology that you need and you have barely enough resources to do so, a lot of people um, like myself tend to just click on it a lot in the in the hopes of squeezing out that last bit of wood in, in, in these few seconds. Panoyan sending another squad of archers over there, I don't think that was a good idea. Especially knowing that I was in Castle Age and had upgrades on my units, or maybe he had to, he didn't necessarily know it, but he, he should have maybe guessed that, that I had more upgrades than him and, and noticed that my units were stronger. Not, not really a good idea to fight my units at that position. Um, so in this position I was overbooming a little bit, or over, overdoing the farming at least. But only with a late castle age. Suffered a little bit from my attacks of course and from um, just not playing as much as the others. Again I don't think I got more than one villager and a little bit of idle time here but that's that's all I need in this situation. Also clicking up to imperial age right now and the classical or oh, one of the classic approaches with the um, with the Mayans in imperial age is to well, if you if you are already going for plumed archers, just uh, keep it that way. Add some sea trams, which destroy buildings very very quickly. Plumed archers are not very good against uh, buildings, so this is a, a good combination. And plumed archers in in 
masses deal just tons of damage, so they're good against most units if they have the attack advantage. And, and going to Imperial Age first would obviously guarantee me having some more upgrades, getting another range and attack upgrade on my units, another uh, perhaps also the elite upgrade. Yeah, I noticed I said I had a lot of knights already and Frank knights at that. So I used uh, the oldest trick in the book and just placed my archers in a, a choke point. This is one of the reasons why ranged units are a little stronger in general, not not of course in all situations um, than melee units in this game, because for one, or that that applies to all units, um, they can stack on 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 tight spaces. Also, melee units can do that, but they cannot profit from it because um, ranged units can all attack at the same time and they can all attack the same target at the same time because they're ranged. They're not they're not required to actually be next to that target. And that means that once they clump up and fight against melee units, the melee units can just fight once at a time, or maybe two at a time, and, and the ranged units, they can just um, fight together and, and deal all the damage at once. Um, and that's what I did there, and I think Saturn did the right thing by moving back. Next time, and I already told him that um, he can just delete his palisade wall, because I, I used his palisade to create that choke point. Um, and just delete that and, and try to surround my units, because in that case, I think he would have cleared my army. And there, I think I'm making another mistake, if I remember this correctly. Um, because Vosh is just running in with his knights, I'm trying to basically fill all the gaps, but I filled the gaps at the wrong spot, because he was getting in on the bottom there. And this is a bit of an overreaction, he had just five knights. I could have, if I played a little more calmly, just walled a little smoother against that, I guess, and not necessarily run back my entire army, but, um, well. I don't think it mattered at, at that stage, I just needed to kind of clear this aggression to be able to focus on my own aggression. Given that Panolian was behind and I saw that he was, uh, well, late to the party, to, to the party of Castle Age, uh, that is, and uh, that I had attacked him earlier, and given that Revanche was my other direct neighbor, I decided to attack him first, and um, built the ram production facilities next to his base. I could have attacked Sadam um, looking at the score, like he obviously looked the scariest or the most dangerous, but he was the first away as well. And Panolian coming in clutch here with aggression, and I, I didn't even patrol in there. Um, but again, I have more upgrades than him, I was in Imperial Age. But he actually traded well there, looking at this now. I think, I think he got his money's worth. This was actually pretty good from coming in with the attack and uh, stopping me from moving out with my entire force. Against the blue player here. And also green coming in again. This time I used the ramps a little bit as, as a meat shield or wood shield in this case I guess. But I had already two upgrades, I didn't have the elite upgrade yet, but I had the bracer, another attack upgrade that is for archers, and I had chemistry, it's just an attack upgrade for, or a bonus attack for all um, ranged units. So I was able to clear the knights. And Vosh obviously had the correct unit choice here, like um, one for one. The um, elite skirmishers trade very efficiently against plumed archers, but I had the right unit to combine my plumed archers with, and that's the sea tram, or in this, I think it was still the cape tram, but I'm not sure. And um, rams have the advantage that they have a lot of pierce armor, like a ton of pierce armor, I think 200, something like that. So they're basically guaranteed to only ever receive one damage per shot from any ranged unit. They kind of soak up the damage and that's why it's a good trick to just have ramps in front of your units to have them basically serve as, as these kind of uh, primary targets for ranged units because every unit always attacks the first unit they see or the closest unit. So the, the elite skirmishers, they attack the ramps first because they were closest and the ramps, they, they can soak up a lot of damage from them, giving my archers the time to, in the meantime, shoot on the least skirms and not receive any damage themselves. I hope that made sense. Um, that's basically how you counter a counter unit, by just adding another one. Saddam here, the first to Imperial Age. I think by clearing out the center of the base here and moving on uncontested, I could already count Romorge Prosadova out, and he already dropped to last of his team. 
in early Imperial Age, this is a very, very strong combination. Siege Ram plus Elite Plumed Archers with all the upgrades. But I think I was still missing some defense upgrades. Nothing substantial though. Uh, that is extremely hard to stop. Masses of well-upgraded knights would have done the trick. But uh, so f what Revanche wasn't ready at that point and the castle didn't go up either. At this point he was basically out. I killed most of his economy. I destroyed his town centers, his production facilities and I was also um, already aggressively taking over his resources. So you just saw me moving some uh, villagers over there to um, place a mining camp. And he yeah, was already preparing for Sadlam coming in with Paladins. I suspected he would just go for the strongest Frank unit, being the Paladin. Um, which, if he caught pieces of my army uh, like alone, not clumped up, not able to to abuse the the advantage of ranged units as much, um, is in, the, in these situations the Paladin is definitely a stronger unit. So I was placing some barracks already just to make sure that um, I could, if need is, tech switch into halberdiers, which is the counter unit to any cavalry unit. But he also did a mistake by only sending in a few units at a time. We, we saw that briefly on the top there. Um, which meant that was two or three shotting each of his, his units and he in that situation, he cannot really surround me, and we can we can see that I killed all of his, his units there. I had left uh, Padolion alone for too long at that stage, but I, I was very confident that this game was basically over at that stage because I had, I had taken out one of them, and none of them was pressuring me at this time, so I was still um, the aggressor in this case. And this is what Salem, um well, shouldn't have been doing, just sending in two units at a time, one unit at a time, and they would all die by themselves. What he needed, what he would have needed, was like a, a mass of units. What I would have needed would have been a little more production. They're remaining it with the stolen stone. And there that ram train is coming, ram train is coming to Saturn Town. Obviously, Panoleon also with the tech advantage, uh, disadvantage here again. Archers are a decent choice, but not against elite plumed archers. I just had the better stats, better numbers, better production in this case. So uh, there was not much he could do in this situation unless he was already up to the next stage or maybe already taking into a different unit. Maybe the Chukunu, the special unit, the um, unique unit of the Chinese. Also an archer, but an archer that performs well against all targets with high pierce armor because it shoots multiple arrows at the same time. And here in this situation Sadlam had massed a little bit of his units but uh, he was targeting mostly the rams. And rams don't do well against melee units but um, in this situation I had a lot of rams and in the, in the time he was attacking them my archers could of course shoot at the knights or the chevalier, um, cavaliers. What are they called? Well, the knights. And that's the GG right there. I'm not sure why I typed it twice. I think the uh, first time I thought I didn't put the uh, star in front of the, the asterisk, I think it's called. Um, which allows me to write or chat to the enemy team. And the game was definitely over at this point. I mean, we can we can see that I was uncontested in Panolion space, uncontested in Salem space, and Revanche Pool. Zelda was already out. And I had started to take over. Um, his resources or his base in this case uh, and yeah I was that close to researching spies um, so overall I think they did reasonably well they had good uptimes I mean um, Salem and Revanche had Panolion was a little bit out of practice so this is uh, to be expected they had solid strategic choices they just um, had the misfortune that I was playing my favorite Sif and a uh, unit that also generally performs very well in most situations but overall, I think they, they did very well. Uh, in the previous matches, they dragged on the matches a little more. In this case, they didn't. But I still think it was a fun match. And I hope that whoever watches this, perhaps other colleagues from the office, enjoyed this. See you next time.